Welcome and thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. On the program today, we're going to be talking about how we can recreate our vitality and vibrancy by doing the right thing with our body. After all, we're only allotted one in life, and it's up to us whether we like it or not to do what we need to do to be sure that it stays to the optimum level that we can be able to achieve. On the program today, we're going to be talking with author of a book with an interesting enough title, but certainly (laughs) enough depth of information to make us believe that this should be a path that we should follow. The book is simply titled, Soak Your Nuts. Cleaning with Karen, Secrets for Inner Healing and Outer Beauty. And I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today, Ms. Karen Calabrese. Good morning. Karen, thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Now, this is pretty exciting stuff. I mean, we've covered this on our program many times, and you start to see people really beginning to take more and more responsibility for their health, especially when it comes to what they put into their bodies. Tell us about how you got started on this. Yeah, well, it's it's... All the women in my family died overweight and young. So this was not a path that I had woke up one day, read a book, and decided this is what I wanted to do. Like I said, they all died overweight and young, and I was a very sickly child. So I started to look into some of the things that were creating, or what I found holistically that were creating the, uh, the imbalances in my body. And it was just kind of, I didn't go from A to Z overnight. It was a little journey that I started on. But as I started getting and feeling better, it was just totally amazing what I could affect myself in the changes I made because in actuality, that's what rules the universe, cause and effect. Mm-hmm. And if we realize that what we're putting in our bodies is going to affect everything from how you think, how you feel, how you look, and we don't make that connection all the time. We like to think that illness or getting old and tired is coming from out there somewhere and just selectively, randomly hitting different people. Um, But what I found out by learning on my own body and the thousands of people that I've worked with now, it really all has to do with how we take care of this internal environment. Well, you also have to know, too, and and we've certainly talked about this many times, is that we're in a very toxic world, and it's interesting what we have to really defend ourselves with from the outside, while at the same time we're not giving our insides any kind of defenses. (laughs) You know, I hear all the time people say, well, you know, I eat pretty good, or I do this, or I do that. If we lived in a perfect world, if you lived in the rainforest on a mountaintop somewhere and you were picking all your fruits and vegetables off the trees, you probably wouldn't need to cleanse and detox and worry. But the very fact of the world that we live in, you know, when man was created, the oxygen levels were at 38%. So we're not even getting the oxygen we're supposed to have. After the Industrial Revolution, it was down to 22%. And we're living in the teens in terms of our oxygen, our environment. So all cancer cells are are anaerobic viruses. So even if we eat perfectly, we're not getting in our air what we need. And we all know that the soil is depleted. So we're living in very bizarre, hostile circumstances, and we have to kind of go the extra distance to find some kind of balance. Mm -hmm. Oh, I totally agree. In fact, it was interesting. uh, Not too long ago, we were doing a segment on cancer and possible cancer prevention, and it's interesting that there are so few people that really know that cancer actually had a cure back in the early 1900s. And when I actually brought this up, interestingly enough, of all people, was the actress Suzanne Somers. And she says, really, what is it? And I thought, well, you wrote a book about cancer. I figured maybe you would have (laughs) heard something about this. But the main proponent, and you hit on it right on the money, was oxygenation of the cell. Exactly. You know, and let's talk about that a little bit. Well, actually, in the 1930s, you also had Royal Rice, Mm -hmm. who did um, studies with vibrational therapy. They gave him 20 terminally ill cancer patients, and they all healed. They've done it. There's so many ways. There's so much out there, and we actually have two Rice machines in our our wellness center. Um, through the oxygenation. We have an ozonator. We do ozonation in our health center. It really is all about keeping these cells that are regenerating on their own every seven years and our tissue every three months. So the body's in this ongoing process of recycling. And if it isn't get them, getting the material to do it, that's why we're getting old, tired, and sick. It's, isn't it's, that a fact? <laughs> it's a very simple equation. Uh, I don't know if you know, Dan, I turned 64 two weeks ago. Oh, congratulations. And I don't know if you've looked at my website, but uh, it's Karen Ra, K-A-R-Y-N-R-A-W dot com. And people think I'm in my late 30s or 40s. Mm-hmm. And I haven't been sick in 42 years. I don't know what illness is. 
I have no commercial medicine in my house. I don't know what illness is. And I don't come from that type of background. They all died young and overweight in my family. So to me, it's so evident that we can affect these changes by, for me, it's cleansing and detoxing my body a minimum of four times a year. You know, Karen, there's an interesting point of view for our listeners to really uh, consider, and that is we we somehow believe that we're supposed to get sick. Exactly. You know, we, it, talk it, about that paradigm and how you've actually experienced it with the people that you've worked with. Yes, we. And not only do we expect to get sick, we accept it. I mean, everybody you meet, you walk into people, how are you doing? Oh, I'm tired. How are you doing? I've got this. How are you doing? I've got headaches. Everybody assumes that this is just part of the human condition. And in my reality, these are all symptoms. All these symptoms are just trying to wake you up and tell you that you're not giving this magnificent machine what it's supposed to have, and it has way too much of what it shouldn't. So it doesn't really matter what the challenge is. It's just the whole body is telling you it doesn't have what it's supposed to. So what I've seen over the years is that people consider it miracles when their bodies start to heal and change. In reality, this is, this is our right. This is the way we're supposed to be. So we've seen many, many people. Uh, in my detox classes, we get anywhere from 90 to 300 people in them every other month, and people come with all types of challenges from fibroids to fibromyalgia, uh, tumors, um, HIV, low T-cell counts, headaches, diarrhea, acne, and it doesn't matter what the challenges they're faced with, and we have 90 to 300 people doing their version of what I recommend, and everybody gets results. So for me, that teaches me that there's only one disease, a toxic body and poor no assimilation of nutrients to the cells. Because we like to think that we're living off of chunks of food. You know, I had steak, I had my protein today, or I had cheese, I had my calcium. In reality, we're living off of the gases from the liquids because you're supposed to chew your food until it's a liquid, and it's those gases feeding our cells. So if you have a lot of toxic, stinky gases in you, this is what's feeding you. And when you start to neutralize those and rebuild the body, it's just totally amazing the results people get. Well, I certainly would testify to that. Uh, a good few years ago, I started in the morning taking uh, green drinks, which was a sea algae. You just kind of mix into water, juice, mm-hmm. whatever the case is. I just usually just went straight for water because I didn't mind the taste, and after a while, it actually tasted pretty good. But Can I but, comment on that real quick? Absolutely, please. The taste that when you don't like the taste, that means the more you dislike it, the more you need it. The more acidic your body is, the more it needs the alkalinity and the chlorophyll <clears throat> because the human condition is supposed to be existing on about 70% chlorophyll a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which, you know, like I said, I just knew that I would like it. There was always a nice sweet aftertaste anyway. But mm-hmm. It got to the point I just was taking it, and the reason was is that, After a while, I noticed that there was an energy level I had. It was very subtle, but it was unique. But that wasn't really, to me, the really driving benefit. To me, what I really enjoyed was just the way that things just didn't irritate me anymore. Exactly. (laughs) You know, that's what I would tell people. I said, you know, I go through the day just feeling pretty content about what's going on. No matter what was going on, it was like, it's you can handle it. Well, those the the algae. They have uh, B12 in them and living B vitamins that go directly to the central nervous system, and it just calms you down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of reasons for that, and the fact that the, chlorf- the algae with chlorophyll in it was neutralizing the poisons in your bloodstream. It's just so amazing what we can affect ourselves if we just decide to get out of the habits we're comfortable with and try something new and different. I totally agree. Now, in your book, we actually covered this as a segment for an entire 30 minutes and uh, that's coconut oil. And this uh, particular guest was coming on talking about the benefits of coconut oil cleansing when it comes to your teeth. Yes. And I started discovering coconut oil really has a long, growing range of things that it actually can do for people. Talk about that a little bit. Well, it's antiviral, antibacterial, and from a vanity standpoint, that's all I use on my skin, and I have the skin of a 20-year-old, but I take it internally also. Uh, When we were having that big SARS scare and um, Mm -hmm. they were trying to get people to vaccinate themselves, I had several mothers who were into holistic thinking call me and say, what should I do, Karen? I don't want to give my babies the vaccine, and I recommended that they do droppers of coconut oil because it is antiviral, it is antibacterial. Uh, We have clients with eczema. 
We have them put it on their skin externally, plus take two tablespoons a day, and it clears up over a period of time with other therapies in addition to because no one thing is going to do everything. But it's amazing the uh, changes you can affect. I do two tablespoons of uh, coconut oil every day, and I also do the gargling to pull the uh, the um, toxicity and bacteria out of my gums. Mm-hmm. Well, this is certainly a lot different from the anti-aging things they throw at you in television, radio, and newspapers. All newspaper the chemicals, ads. yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm kind of curious when you were talking about that SARS scare uh, situation going on, and everybody needs to run out and get vaccinated. I personally have always had a problem with that kind of thinking. You know, for instance, come out and get your free flu shot. You oh, know. I think that's terrifying. What bugs? Well, <laughs> it is. These vans pull up in front of places and people march out and give them their arms. Exactly. And they inject you, know. and you haven't got a clue as to what they're putting in your body. Right. I'm, I, you know, I have not, well, like I said, I haven't been sick in 42 years, and I don't recommend for anybody else, but I personally have not been to a doctor either. I don't get mammograms because you can't convince me that I should nuke my body twice a year to see if I have cancer. I don't do any of those things, but I feel very comfortable in my choices and the fact that I am cleansing and detoxing and I'm very in tune with my body. But those trucks that pull up all over the city, and it, it cracks me up. I, well, it, it, people will come in and they'll say, oh, yes, I had my flu shot for the year. And I go, okay, and uh, did you get sick last year? Yeah, but I let them put this chemical in my system and I'm going to assume that whatever the government has decided or the AMA should go in my body is going to work. And it's not that I tell people that they have to that they need to stay away from doctors or anything like that. I just say don't make decisions out of fear. Research what you're doing. And if it feels right and it sounds right and you've researched it, then go for it. Because we all intuitively know what's right. But me personally, you couldn't put anything in my arm <laughs> that somebody else. <laughs> well, that's what I was uh, about to say is that I don't remember ever getting a flu shot. I just thought this is ridiculous. You know, you're going to make yourself sick to prevent from being sick. That doesn't make any sense. Well, we're living in such an age of chemicalization, Dan. I mm-hmm. mean, it's chemicals, chemicals for everything. And people are very comfortable in relying on these foreign substances to heal themselves. And I say in my classes, think about it. If you have a head and you take an aspirin and it goes away, it wasn't because your body was lacking an aspirin. You know, these chemicals are blocking and creating imbalances in our system that our bodies don't know what to do, and it creates further imbalances. So these flu shots, that does frighten me. Mm -hmm. Now, in your uh, book, you actually lay out a plan, and you talk about uh, what you need to get started with, and then, of course, some of the things that you're going to experience, especially during the detoxification process. Go ahead and uh, share that with our listeners. Well, you know, there are many roads to the top of the mountain. There are many forms of detoxification, and I don't profess mine to be the only or the best. It's the best that I know, and I've done it for <clears throat> over 30 years. Mm-hmm. But in my particular program, I it's a gradual process. We don't go from A to Z overnight. And people come in, and we start to remove things that I think are, that I've learned are very detrimental to the human condition. And because people are so habitual and they're used to, everybody can't just give up everything at once. So uh, I personally am a vegan. I'm a raw foodist. I haven't eaten meat, fish, chicken, or dairy in 42 years. But everybody isn't ready to assume that label or go there. And what I recommend is it isn't about gaining a label or being a vegan, vegetarian, or raw foodist. It's about breaking down the layers of toxicity several times a year, and then your body will lead you to what it's ready to do next because we all intuitively know it's right. So in my program, people come in once a week, or if you're doing the book, it's on a weekly basis, and I take away stuff and I add certain things to help start balancing blood sugar levels and your protein levels. We start shrinking your tummy because most people eat way too much. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm telling you and your listeners, look at your fist. You know, and the size of your fist is the size of your stomach. It is a tiny little sack in there, and it doesn't need all this food three, four, or five times a day. We are literally killing ourselves at the table by eating too much, too. So we get all of those things in balance a week after for about two weeks, and Probably the most important part of my class is the community created because there are a million protocols out there to do things for healing the body, but it's the community that we create. And so we spend a lot of time talking and discussing what's going on. I actually have a Facebook online community for people doing the detox around the world, and so they can log into our Facebook uh, detox cleansing community. And it's learning that other people are going through pretty much the same thing in different ways. 
you know, and so mm-hmm. it connects on a cellular level. And then by the third week, those who are ready, we do a little mini fast, and those some people are ready to fast even longer. And uh, it's amazing the results that people get. I mean, we have thousands and thousands of testimonials. We have people on our website that you can read. We actually have a free DVD that we can send to you with testimonials on it, people that have mm-hmm. uh, done the detox. And we had an 87-year-old guy. They were ready to amputate his toe. It healed at the end of 30 short days. We had a McDonald's executive that was ready to um, – <laughs> she was on a, – a, um, a McDonald's executive. I don't yeah. know why that's funny. But. <laughs> well, but you know what? Thank goodness she was getting enlightened. You know, yeah. she came and she did the detox, and uh, we got the letter from her doctor saying she's no longer diabetic. Um, we've had people with fibromyalgia running afterwards. We've had people with chronic headaches, rheumatoid arthritis. It doesn't matter the label you give it. It's cleaning and detoxing the body. And I'm often asked, because I am a vegan for 42 years and I'm primarily a raw foodist for almost 30 years and I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs. It's all been a journey to get here. Why do I detox? And it's what we talked about in the beginning. We live in a toxic world. I'm driving behind buses. I get my clothes dry cleaned and I'm not using the greener cleaners at this point, so I'm taking in chemicals through my skin. Mm -hmm. I eat out at other restaurants that aren't organic. I'm not eating animals or cooked food, but... Let's face it, I'm sure there are chemicals in the food, you know. So I believe I drive behind buses. So I feel it's necessary for me to clean my body out a minimum of four times a year, and that gives me such a sense of clarity and balance, and it keeps you awake. Mm -hmm. Because people don't realize all this toxicity that you're living in basically puts you to sleep, and you don't even think your listeners are awake because they're tuning in because they know there's something else. But, you know, we're a small segment of the world. Mm-hmm. You know, in your book, as I was reading, I noticed uh, uh, one gentleman that you brought up, and he's actually not only been on our show many times, but uh, he's really championing exactly what you're talking about, especially when it comes to the fight of curing diabetes, and that's Dr. Gabriel Cousins of the Tree oh, of Life yes, Foundation. He's, he's brilliant, and mm-hmm. yes, I, I love Dr. Gabriel Cousins, and he he brings up all the aspects of healing. And what I love, one of the many things I love about him is that he's a medical doctor that's crossed over. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting that we're seeing that happen almost more and more? Well, if you notice in my book, I had five doctors give mm-hmm. me testimonials uh, for my book. They've been through my classes. They send their patients to my classes. Um, we We do some streaming. I mean, some of the doctors are waking up. And I don't think there's a huge evil cabal of bad doctors out there. I just think it's the system that's in place. And it's very difficult to step outside of that system. And, you know, if you're spending $20,000 a semester to go and learn how to heal people, you don't want to hear some grasses and food's going to do the same. <laughs> do a better job. <laughs> Isn't that a fact? Oh, that's just wacky witch medicine. Going. Right. Yeah. Now, how has that been when it comes to that community? Have you found uh, resistance at times? Well, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to be interviewed a lot. And, you know, for every pro, there's a con, and they will usually have a doctor or a registered dietitian give a rebuttal to what I say. And I am not a scientific person. Um, I'm not a, a Dr. Cousins or Victoria Skolvinskas. I've just lived it and intuitively done it. So when I'm questioned, I generally say, well, here's the deal. Try it for a week and tell me I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. There's no way it can't work. You know, cause and effect. There's no way it can't work. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another approach, too, and I've actually said this many times on the program, mainly so the listeners can say, you know, that's an interesting point of view, and that is when we did talk or had Suzanne Summers on our program, uh, she had mentioned how she went on to Larry King to talk about her book, I saw on. that segment. Did you? Okay, yeah. so then you know that there were also two other doctors there to right. refute what she was talking about. And, you know, of course, she went after them and said, you know, after all these years and after billions of dollars, you're not any further than you were 60 years ago. And I said, you know, even more interesting is that the audacity of bringing on people to refute what, you know, is Has going on here. You. I said, shouldn't they be concerned with results? But. That's not that's not the way of the world. The but world. isn't that interesting, though, that they overlook that? It's a matter of being right. It's not a matter of the results. Dan, they did a, a, a series I, I'm in Chicago, in the Chicago Tribune. They did a month-long series of uh, um, breast cancer and how ineffective mammograms were. And 
each day, or maybe it was a week long, and each day they talked about how negative it was and what it could do and the results. And then at the end of the fifth day, day they said, but you still should go in and get a mammogram. And I was like, <laughs> they're, tell, they're telling you everything is going to do wrong. It's like the chemical ads on TV. You know, you can uh, smile all day long, but you'll get this and that and the other in the Tokyo Rose voice. You know, mm. it's, it, it's just the bizarreness of our world. And that's why my main purpose, like I said, isn't to make a person a vegan or a vegetarian or a raw foodist, but to help people wake up so that they start to question this insanity mm -hmm. and not just accept it like, well, this is just the way of the world. Right. Especially with enough advertising telling us what oh, this is the way we goodness. should be. You know, it always blows my mind. I remember I actually had an awakening in my early 20s. Uh, about advertising, and I finally said to my mother one time, I said, you know, I don't understand what's going on here. They come on the program. Uh, they've got an advertisement, especially when it comes to people that are allegedly, you know, aging in life. And they say, you may have this symptom, but then here's this drug. Okay, mm -hmm. well, then they don't do what they do now, which is now they've got to tell you all the possible side effects, which right. I, which I applaud. I don't know how that happened, you... but I'm so glad that they're doing that now. It's like... Okay, you're trying to remove one possible symptom that we may not even be aware that we've had, but now we think we do. We take this so that we can get seven or eight side effects from that. What kind of thinking goes on there? <laughs> it's the insanity, insanity of the Zaro world, as I call it. <laughs> yeah. and, and the beauty of what you're doing, your radio station, and the classes I teach. And I, have, I do a free information seminar twice a month also for free, and I give people samples of our food, and I give people the opportunity to question. But, and I tell people that they need to hear this over and over again, so keep showing up, keep doing it, keep listening, because this is the commercial for you. You don't get it just once. Mm -hmm. And when you have a radio show like yours or the classes I teach or reading the book. I even say in my book, even if you don't detox, read the book four times a year. Right. Just to keep getting the information put in because bizarro world, there's a negative gravitational pull to go in the other direction. And we as human beings are tribal. We're wolf-like. And we are literally being pulled in the other direction. It's an uphill climb to do the opposite of what we should do because the world is set up that way. I mean, they have 40,000 Starbucks one of the most acidic things on the planet, and yeah. cancer loves acid, but nobody's going to tell you how bad it is because everybody's addicted to it. They're not 40,000 juice bars or health food stores, and that's just the way of the world. So we have to educate ourselves and continue over and over again and hear it over again and say it over again and do it over again and create our own commercial because that's how you're sucked into the other world with those crazy commercials. Completely agreed. Now, um now, the title of your book, uh, Soak Your Nuts, <laughs> now, was that meant to be tongue-in-cheek? What was going on there? But tell us specifically why that title, and, because you actually talk about nuts quite extensively. Exactly. Well, you know, I have to tell you, I walked away from three publishers because they wanted me to change the name. That's how strongly I felt it came to me in a meditation. And it came to me because I wanted to bring some fun and, and joy to this whole process. You know, people think of getting healthy as, oh, my God, i got to eat healthy food right. and get healthy and gotta give eat up so this, I that, it. and the other. <laughs> and, you know, it just has this whole connotation of it's not fun. You know, there's no fun in being healthy. I'm considered a health nut. You know, it's, there's all mm -hmm. these derogatory negative things attached to being healthy. So I wanted to bring a smile to people's face, and I have yet to hear so, have somebody say it or read it and they don't smile. And there is a reason for it. Because, and here's another deal. So many people are, are allergic to nuts. They have nut allergies, but yet they can eat McDonald's. And your allergies are based in digestion. And so when you soak nuts, you break down the enzyme inhibitors and the fats, and they're easier to digest. They also come alive. And being living beings with living cells, we need living food. When you eat living food, it takes a lot to, less to fill you up. So if you would eat a whole bag of nuts, Great, but if you soak them, seven or eight will make you feel satisfied and you have so much more energy, so much more clarity and not stuffing yourself or trying to be full all the time. So soak your nuts has a lot of benefits. And I've actually had many clients with celiac disease, uh, I'm not so that's the wheat thing, with uh, nut allergies who are able to ultimately eat the soaked nuts because I also don't believe a diagnosis is supposed to be a sentence for life. It's supposed to be a wake-up call to look at what's going on in your body and do something differently. 
Now, one of the things that I've done um, uh, over the years is that I had been involved in the food industry, uh, serving specifically, and I've also cooked quite a bit as well. I love cooking. And uh, it's really fascinating that this day and age that what you're beginning to see a lot more of are people with a lot of food allergies, oh, things sure. that they're and limited to eating. And it amazes me, you know, how they sit there feeling like they've just been giving a death sentence. But you take a look at where they place themselves, and, and, and a good portion of cases in restaurants, you're pretty limited by what you can have on the menu. That's very true. But all allergies from my teacher, Dr. Wigmore, who started the raw food movement in our time, are based in digestion. Mm -hmm. And most people's digestive systems are so compromised from all the years of eating the wrong thing. And children are starting out younger and younger with the wrong thing and that you have more and more allergies. I've actually had people with uh, severe nut allergies eat something by mistake. I give them enzymes, digestive enzymes, and it stops the reaction. So... Basically, what I have learned is you can turn any symptom around. Does it happen overnight or one pill or one? Absolutely not. It can take anywhere from seven, years, seven, seven months to a year for a relatively healthy body to turn itself around. It takes anywhere from a year to two years for someone with a challenge to turn it around. But that's something else in our bizarre world. We're used to the instant. Everything is instant. Give me a pill right. so it's done. Give me a chemical so I don't feel it. But we do see, and people write into me on a regular basis, how they've made the changes by detoxing and cleansing. They can eat soaked nuts now. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. saying you should run out and eat a nut. And, you know, nuts are like a wonderful source of protein and calcium. Mm-hmm. So it's a shame all the people that are going to eat McDonald's and can't eat soaked nuts. <laughs> so I had, a, I, I had a great time with the book and coming up with the name. And like I said, you know, guys aren't going to be be embarrassed to carry you about around a book because it makes people giggle and laugh and women and old people. And, and it's, it's really had a wonderful response from the general public. And I've done a lot of TV, and, uh, and people love the name, so I'm glad I stuck to my guns. Well, I certainly am, too. Like I said, I looked at that, and I said, well, you know, you got this pretty girl right there right next to a title like that, and I was just like, oh, this is kind of interesting. But even more so, just to let the listeners know, it isn't a big, huge book, and what I really enjoy yeah. about this is not only do you talk about the things that you should implement into your diet, which you should take out of your diet, and then how you should balance your system, but you also have a nice, wonderful layout of philosophy and also things that really support what you're talking about here. Thank you. And I put in a lot of testimonials because people like to say, oh, it worked for this person because people often look at me, you know, I'm thin, I don't look my age, and they go, yeah, it's great for her, but it's not going to work for me. So I put in lots of testimonials of clients over the years. I have testimonials from doctors, from uh, athletes and other uh, food people, and uh, it it just gives people a sense of, okay, this can work for me too. It isn't just for her. Mm-hmm. Agreed, totally. Now, Karen, if you can, give us a website that people can find out more about this. I would love to. You can go to Karen Raw, K A R Y N R A W dot com. Karen Raw dot com. And um, we have lots of information. I actually have my own line of products, my own line of makeup, because for me, I don't put any chemicals on me, so my makeup line doesn't have parabens. We have our even, we do organic manicures and pedicures without the formaldehyde. Because, you know, Dan, I really believe it's this daily dosages of chemicals that's really killing people. Right. That you're taking it in on every way, shape, or form that you don't think about. And here's the deal. I'm far from perfect, you know. I color my hair. I had gray hair at 17, that's the weakening of the kidneys, and I thought it was cute at 17, but I don't care for it at 64. Not that I don't think gray hair is beautiful on certain people, it's just my choice. I'm not perfect and I don't want it. So I color my hair. I'm taking in a chemical. I have to detox my body. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think by your own admission by that, that you're actually letting people know that you're not perfect and that's okay. (laughs) I don't think we're born to be perfect. I think when you get perfect is when you transition on to the next level, whatever it is, and I'm not ready to be perfect. <laughs> really? Okay, let me have my flaws. It's my fingerprint. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still in the university of life to learn, you know? Exactly. Well, that's something that you certainly touch on in the book is that we all are here to learn the lessons, whether they're good or bad. It doesn't matter. They're there. But that's 
what makes you uniquely you? And I think that's the most marvelous statement that you did make in your book. Again, the book is Soak Your Nuts, Cleansing with Karen. <laughs> Karen? Calabrese, thank you for joining us here. Thank you for having me again. Can I just say real quick, I always end my lectures and talks with it. If you don't take care of your body, the most magnificent machine you'll ever be given, where are you going to live? Thank you so much, Dan. Thank you again. Again, Karen Calabrese, the book, So Cure Nuts. We also encourage you to visit us at our website, which is beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. And sign up for our free weekly e-newsletter. We also have a wonderful blog where you can listen to our archive shows. YouTube videos are available as well as hot links for you to use and share with others. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you again for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 Radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway. <laughs>